everyone, it's Tatiana, your NYC Plant Mama, and today we're going to talk about DIY self-watering systems. My boyfriend and I are really looking forward to visiting our families. We haven't seen them in a long time, and we're going to be away from the apartment for a little bit and away from all of the plants. And last time I was away from them, they didn't do so hot. And the real problem this time is that my roommate is also away from the apartment so she can't even be here to water the plants. So I kind of need to be a little more diligent about setting them up so that they can succeed. I did ask a couple of my friends if they could come to my apartment and water them and the scheduling just hasn't really worked out. So we're planning on seeing my boyfriend's family first and we can drive there. So I am going to bring a couple of my plants that are a little needier and that are a little more special to me and I don't want anything to go wrong with them just so I can keep an eye on them. When we go visit my family, which is further away, we will probably be away for a much longer period of time. I want to kind of experiment with these now while I'm going to be gone for about two and a half weeks, see which methods work, which methods don't work, and then use the ones that did work for the longer period of time I'm away. And then hopefully I can ask my neighbor if they can pop in as well to kind of either refill the watering systems or just check in on the plants in general, give them water, maybe drop off some plants with one of my friends. Still kind of figuring things out, but let's get into the DIY self-watering systems. So if you do any research on these, there are about five main methods for DIY self-watering that are recommended. There's the water wicking drip system, which requires string. There is the upside down glass bottle method in your pot. There is the greenhouse method with a plastic bag. There's the water bottle method as well. And then there is the water bath, water saucer method, which is kind of creating a bath, a tub of water, and putting your plants in them and then letting them soak it up. That one, I'm not as worried about. I probably can do that and just fill up my tub or something, even though I don't have light in there. I'll worry about that later. But let's go through the other DIY methods. So I'm gonna explain how they work first, how long they're supposed to work for, and then let's just tackle making them because I haven't made any of them before and Let's see what works. So the water wicking system with string you'll see at a lot of garden centers and big box stores when you buy a plant from there, you'll notice that you have string hanging out of your nursery pot like so. And I'm just gonna pop this one out really quick. But you'll see that the string is looped through the bottom of the drainage hole and then sort of secured to the side like so. I have two pots that I got at the store that already had these included, which is gonna be great. And I will just be able to put these in a reservoir of water and they'll be able to soak up the water into the plant. So I wanna create a couple of different DIY systems myself using this method that I've seen work before. And you can also do this from the top of the pot instead of the bottom. Those are examples there where they were inserted in the nursery pot before the plant was put in there. And I obviously have a lot of plants that are already in their pots. They're not as easy to lift out of them as the other one was. And what you can do is take the string, place it inside of the pot like so, bury it pretty deep into the soil just to get it near the roots, and then let the string sit in a jar or bucket of water next to it. And the plant will actually bring water in from that string. I don't know all the science behind it, I'm just dropping keywords here, but that is the basic idea of the string method. And that string method is supposed to last for about one to three weeks-ish. I think it really depends on how much water you are putting in the reservoir that it's going to take from. So if you have a really big bucket of water, it will last you a lot longer than if you have a small little cup of water. The next one is the plastic bag greenhouse method. So I have a bunch of different size plastic bags, including some larger space bags, not huge, but some larger ones that I think I can use for larger plants. You put the plant inside the bag after watering it, seal it off, you know, blow a little bit in there so it has some of your CO2, and this will create a sort of greenhouse effect, a mini greenhouse where it's recycling the water that's in there, so it's not going to need to 
constantly be watered. The water won't escape from the bag or evaporate or anything like that. So that is definitely going to be an interesting method that I'm going to try with a couple of my different plants, just depending on what fits inside these bags. I don't have that many, and I don't have that many that are large, so we'll see. And this plastic bag method is supposed to last the longest out of all of them, approximately six to eight months, some people even say, because it is recycling that water. So I'll really be interested to see if this works. And I think I can also use that same method by creating a mini terrarium just with upside down plastic containers and things like that. I think that'll serve the same effect. So that one I'm the most excited to test and see if it'll work. The plastic bottle and the glass bottle method are kind of similar, kind of different. What I've seen is with the plastic bottle, you can fill it up, puncture holes in it, and then actually bury this inside of your pot like so. This won't work because of the sizing, but it will release the water into your pot this is a good one to do with a needier plant. Again, this one won't last more than a week. It'll probably last four to five days. And you kind of have to find the right size bottle for the right size pot. And I don't have a lot of big plants other than my white bird of paradise here that I would want to stick something in. And honestly, this one will last a couple of weeks with one watering because it is a bigger pot. It will take a lot longer to dry out than some of my smaller pots. That one I'm not as excited about trying, honestly. I don't use plastic water bottles. I use my uh, Swell bottle and my Brita. So I don't actually have a lot of these plastic bottles anyway, but I am interested to see how that will work, of course. And similarly, you have the glass bottle method, which because you can't puncture holes in the glass, you can take one with a cap like so. This you could do with a wine bottle. I have some olive oil here, oh, avocado oil. Fill it with water, put it upside down, and it will slowly drip out of your bottle into the pot. This is an example. Again, you kind of want to find the right size pot for the right size recyclable item that you have, which can be kind of tricky given the range of plants that I have and what I have available. And the glass bottle method is supposed to last similar to the plastic bottle, about a week, maybe five days or so. Again, I think it depends on how big your bottle is and how big the hole is that is dripping out. That is going to be a factor for sure. And of course the water bath method, I don't really think I need to show you guys, but that one scares me because of the root rot situation. If it's sitting in water for a long period of time, it might just be rotting the plant. So I am a little nervous about that method, to be honest, and I don't really want to try it, but I, I obviously will try it just to let you guys know and have a definitive answer of what worked the best. I'm thinking for that method, my propagations might be the best for that, like fill a big bucket of water, put all the things I'm still propagating in there because for a lot of them, the roots are so small, by the time this little area of water is gone, the roots can't reach the water at the bottom of the jar. I think I have to tackle propagations at the end. That's a whole nother animal. I'll definitely get there eventually. There's a lot going on. I'm a little overwhelmed. A lot of my plants, I'm not going to set up a self-watering system for. I have a lot of succulents and cacti and bigger plants that if I water them once and really drown them and let them soak it up, I pretty much go about two and a half weeks a lot of the time between those waterings as well, if not longer for some of my succulents, because I'm like, whatever give it a month. I don't really care. They're from the desert. It doesn't rain there. I'm sorry. And the last thing I'm kind of worried about is the plants I have on my balcony. I don't think I'm going to leave any out there. Maybe the cacti because whatever. They probably don't need that much water anyway, but it is a lot hotter out there and a lot brighter. So I'm thinking I should just move all of those plants inside just so they don't dry out as quickly in case it doesn't rain. It has been raining almost every day or at least weekly but even when it rains a lot and they get wet the next day I see them and they're completely dry again because it is so hot out so I don't really want to risk leaving anything outside but again I'm going to tackle that later let's get into the DIY self-watering methods so first I'm gonna start by rating our recycling area now this is one of the biggest shames in the apartment we have our recycling bin behind our couch here in the living room and it kind of piles up very quickly. We have a lot of recyclables, you know, some cereal, some fruit snacks, some rum, just random things that we use in our apartment. And basically once the pile 
reaches the point where we start to see it over the couch, that's when we say, okay, we need to take the recycling out. So it's very embarrassing. I don't want to talk about it more than this, but luckily, because I haven't taken it out in so long, I think there are a lot of, we really don't drink that much. This is a bottle of rum that we took like six months to get through. So I'm thinking I can use a lot of these types of bottles, plastic things to create little self-watering systems. So that's my first step. I'm gonna raid through here and I'm not gonna bother showing you guys our disgusting trash pile any longer than we need to. Okay, other than a jarring amount of fruit snack boxes and cinnamon toast crunch boxes, because my boyfriend is literally obsessed, I'm not even kidding, there were like 20 boxes of fruit snacks. Welch, sponsor us, Mott sponsor us, we really like fruit snacks here. But I did find a lot of goodies that I can use. I kind of pulled aside the things that fulfilled those methods that I talked earlier. Plastic bottles, we've got different plastic bottles here and jugs and different glass bottles as well. A whole other bag of recycling. So I really wanted to use the recycling that I had instead of getting a self-watering pot or those globes or those spikes that you can buy online just because I have so many and I really want to upcycle and recycle the things that I already have without buying something new. It's better for the environment and it's also better for your wallet. And I hope that if you guys do this, you also try going through your recyclings as well. It really lucked out that I haven't thrown out my recycling in a long time because I had a lot of options to choose from. I've started to go through my plans and see which ones I want to do a self-watering method for and which ones I don't. Plants like this, I have a lot of plants that don't have drainage, don't at me, they are doing just fine. And these ones I think I can just water once and I usually don't water them again for a while because I want them to completely dry out and not risk any root rot, especially when it comes to a pot without drainage. So things like this, I'm setting aside, I'm not worrying about at all. I'm going to start with the plastic bag mini greenhouse method because I think this one's going to be the most effective and I just have actually a good amount of plastic bags now that I've kind of searched through everything I own and that are a pretty decent size. This is my first plant that I am going to put in a self-watering system. This is my periwinkle and vinca. I have both in this pot and they're really similar. And this plant I really feel needs to stay moist like a lot. I have a bottom to this. I don't know where it is. Let me go grab it. While I was gone, I found another plastic bag, so good for me. So I'm gonna keep this on the pot. Wow, this isn't even the right one. <laughs> oh my God, okay, I'll be back again. So I'm gonna keep this on the bottom of the pot just because this will keep a little more moisture in the plant. And now I'm gonna try to find a bag that feels like it'll fit the plant at its full height. And what you need for the plastic bag method is just a Ziploc bag or other kind of resealable bag. And if you feel that your plant might get a little crushed in the bag, you can use a wooden stake like so just to prop up in there. I'm not afraid about this plant in particular. <gasps> I just lost the flower. Oh, I'm the worst. That's okay. It, has, it looked a little old and it has new ones coming, but I'm going to keep this in my hair in her honor. The cute okay <laughs> so in the bag I'm going to water the plant thoroughly I might have a hole in this bag that's okay that happens and now I'm going to seal it oh god it has really big holes okay I'm gonna tape up the holes and move along and then deal with this one later but essentially I've created this little environment for it, as you can see here, and hopefully that will work. Now that there are holes in it, <laughs> this is so chaotic. After doing that once, I've realized that I want to amend what I'm doing a little bit. I'm gonna water first. So I'm watering the Pailea peperomoides, or Chinese money plant. This one I've been keeping in my windowsill, and it's getting a lot of light, and it is growing a lot and it looks cute it's a lot bigger than the last time i showed you and it stays pretty moist in this plastic it does have drainage as you'll see dripping out i'm gonna try 
upside down this time. Okay, that one didn't have holes in it because you saw how it just popped right up. So there's my next one. Let me slip this inside. This one has the best seal because it's a space bag, which I'm probably never gonna use for clothes again because it's dirty. I do have some plastic bags left. I'm gonna move on to some of the other methods and I think I'm gonna save these for my propagations. RIP. Let's tackle some of the water bottles. I have a couple of different bottle-like things like so that I'm thinking if I bury them in the soil like that, that they will drip out. I think this one might be a good size for this plant. So for the bottle method, what you need to do is prick a hole in the plastic. Similar to the glass one, I'm kind of using this as the glass method because none of my plastic bottles are gonna fit buried underneath the soil. Like it's not gonna work. The only one I could possibly do that for is my bird of paradise, but my bird of paradise will be fine with one good soaking and she'll be okay. I'm gonna use these as kind of the glass method. I'll poke a hole in this. I have these little pins, so I'm gonna try poking a hole with that, and if that doesn't work, I have a hammer that I can use. But I'm gonna start with a thumbtack and just see if I can poke a hole. And I did. Okay, so that was really easy. You don't need an extra little thing. I'm gonna poke a hole in a couple of the different ones as well. I'm trying to find ones about this size and smaller. I feel like this is a little big for some of my plants. This is insane to me. So I just filled up the olive oil and I'm going to dig a little hole in this pot here just to find a place to nestle it in. And with the hole, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's streaming out actually kind of fast and I have a feeling this is gonna be out in like a day. So I'm not really sure how I feel about this to be honest. So as soon as I turn it over, it's already dripping out. So that's kind of what it looks like though. Ooh, I can't move it that much. But let's see how quickly this drains out. And I'm going to keep doing that with some of the different bottles and things that I have. And that is kind of the combo plastic bottle and glass bottle method. You really want to use one with a lid so that way you can kind of control the flow a bit. But even now, like I'm not controlling the flow that much. It is pretty rapidly going out. I think the pressure does stop it. I'm not seeing a ton of water in here. Now that I just took it out, I was curious to see what was happening. And ooh, ooh. I'm not loving this method so far. I think you have to dig it pretty deep. I'm gonna try this on a different plant, actually. Proportionally, this just doesn't feel right in there. This one's almost even harder. Okay, that one's staying a little better. Ah! They really topple over. So this is at least leaning against this more heavy sturdy pot so it's not toppling over. So I am going to check this one in the morning, see if the soil is moist at all and to see how much of this has drained and fill it up if I need to, but I do know that there's a hole there that I can fit it in. The water bottle is full, it drips, and I'm going to try to dig the hole, kind of how I did the other one, I did it much deeper. hope I'm not damaging too many roots. Also is aerating the soil a bit. Okay, this one fits much better. So there are my two DIY bottle method. This one is really, really easy and works in a pinch. The other way that you would use the plastic bottle method is to prick all the holes and then bury it completely. I really don't foresee this working very well, especially with house plants. Maybe you could do this outside better because there's nowhere to bury anything. I already have so many roots in here, so much going on, and it was difficult enough just to get the little top in there. But, so they fall out. I think you need to put them in exactly where you're going to have them because they're not super stable. Let's move on to the string method. So I've done this before last year during the holidays and some of the strings did work and some of them didn't. I think some of them I didn't bury as deep as I should have and I also was using a thinner string so I'm hoping this thicker string actually helps with a lot of that. I'm just gonna show you how to do this, but I might set up a little better system 
somewhere else. So I filled this to the top with water. I'm taking a piece of string. The length you use really depends on how tall your pot is, how far away the water is, etc. So I'm just going to take the string and bury it into this plant. Sticking it right in the hole, covering it with soil, and then pop, the string goes into the water. That is it. This is what you can do if you are in a pinch and you don't have the time to take your plant out and put the string from the bottom. If you want to do it from the bottom, you would need to create some sort of system where the water is below and you could push it up through the drainage hole like so, but it just doesn't feel as easy as doing this and then placing this on a table somewhere. But that is the string method which I have used before and it seems to be pretty good. I'm going to just quickly finish up all of my bags, all of the bottles and string, and I'll show you guys a couple of the plans that I have done that for, and then I'm going to jump over and do the propagation stuff. So let me show you what I ended up with regarding the different methods I described at the beginning. I talked about five methods and I sort of have the hybrid of the five here. So the first one is the Ziploc bag method slash plastic bag. And this is where we've created a sort of a mini greenhouse that will let the plant recycle the water that's already in there. I'm kind of the most nervous about this one and yet the most confident about this one. So we'll see what happens. It was tough to get the plants in here. This one is kind of like, you either need bags big enough to fit your plants or you need plants small enough to fit in standard size plastic bags. This is the joint bottle method. The plastic or glass bottle works. You fill up the bottle, prick a hole in the lid and put them upside down in the soil and it will slowly drip out. You can see here that I'm already getting a little bit of water to come out of these. So I'm not sure how long this will last. I think this will only last a week tops because it's really just giving them one watering and doing it in a weird way. You know, it's not soaking the soil through, but it definitely will give them some water. Then we have the two string methods as well as sort of the water bath method. We have the string here that's buried into the plant sitting in a tub of water like so, and that will presumably carry water into the plant. The other way is I had the pots that had strings already in them, and I have a reservoir of water, and I just put them in there so it can soak up that water. And that's really, really similar to the method where you could just put the whole thing in the water and let it soak up even without having the strings. Here it kind of makes sense as either because I've had the water so high and I don't have that separation between the string and the water that I'm calling that the joint method there. So that is kind of what I ended up with. I still have a lot more plants to get through as well as these propagations where I am actually going to take a lot of these that have started to root and pretty much wet them in a paper towel and put those in a plastic bag. And then anything else, I will just try to leave it in where it is. A plant that's propagating like that, which has roots all the way to the bottom, that is not gonna soak up all the water. However, these plants that I have here, if you can see, the roots kind of don't go that deep. Now they are starting to, but they really don't. This is a prime example. They're never gonna reach the water that's there, and that's one that I'm gonna be really worried about leaving alone for a bit. There they are. Let me just quickly show you what I'm going to do with my propagations, two examples. So I have one propagation that's potted up and I'm gonna do a similar thing, put it in a plastic bag and keep that moist here. So that's one. And these are so much easier to pot in bags when you have a smaller plant like that. And now my other propagation, I have a wet paper towel here and I just don't wanna risk planting it in soil and not being able to attend to it when it hasn't been acclimated to the soil yet because this other plant has been acclimating to the soil for quite some time now. So this one I'm just going to wrap in the paper towel and keep the roots moist and just wrap it a couple times so it's really in the paper towel. And I'll do the same for this one, keeping that nice and moist. And then being in the bag will help it not dry out, I'm hoping. Sorry, I'm literally recording I'm using my knees. And then this one, 
I'm going to wrap in here as well. And then I have a piece that has not propagated yet, but I'm hoping maybe being in the humid bag will actually help it move that along a bit. And then into the bag they go. Thanks so much for watching this DIY self-watering video. Let me know if you've tried any of these methods before and if they've worked for you, and I'll keep you updated on which ones work the best for me. Don't forget to subscribe and see how my plants are doing after relying on these self-watering systems for a couple of weeks. I hope this video was helpful and that you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. everything is pretty loose plan wise. I like to create a lot of plans. My boyfriend, not so much. He's like, we can leave whenever. I'm like, okay, great. I feel a lot more stressed about that and I have like 50 children to care for, but whatever, that's fine.